Hey, hey, what's up? This is Paul Salt from Super Easy Apps, and we're talking about logging. So today I'm going to expand on what I talked about in the previous video. This is how I am using my logs. I just wanted to give you a quick recap of how that structure works. So thanks for watching, and let's dive right into my logging structure. So let's talk about my comment. Um, I find that writing and logging is like essential to the type of stuff that I'm doing, whether it's personal projects or it's contract work. Now I've worked on a number of different projects and so I've sort of adapted this flow to work for different situations. So my dev journal, whatever you wanna call it, uh, I call it my log file, is multiple markdown files. And I use headings, I use markup, and I use multi-markdown to manage all of that. And it's just synced um, with Dropbox or iCloud right now. So I've got a log.md file. This is gonna be where I'm writing date entries with problems, questions, links, code snippets, answers, and in some of those mini blog posts. Then I've got my archive log file. This is, I periodically will take stuff from the log file, copy it over, cut and copy, to the archive log um, because the editor kind of gets a little bit slower as I type long files. I think this is like, um, uh, it's approaching, um, I think 500,000 lines or something like that. Could be wrong. Uh, that's maybe the character count or that's the lines, I don't remember. So it's big. Um, so I'm not always in my archive log. So that way I keep log quick to open, quick to edit. Um, it's not having to process a lot of things. The new thing that I started this past probably two years is a task list. Too often I would have like my to-dos in my log, but then it would get washed away by a mini blog post or it would get um, out of sight, out of mind because I just have too many things that I'm working on and logging and writing about. So this is where I put a to-do and a done list. And this is helpful for sort of helping me direct my focus. Um, then I talked about having a work summary. So I try to summarize the key points, the impact, so that I can talk about that with a manager or so that I can talk about that um, with my accountability partner. So I started um, using my dad as an accountability partner and I wanted to summarize like what am I doing week after week since I'm job searching and I'm applying to places and I wanted I wanted to level up, so I wanted someone to keep me accountable. Um, so I'm using a work summary for that. I also have like this blog.md. A lot of times I'm very verbose. So those ideas for blog posts, um, if I'm not gonna extract them directly to a separate file, I might throw them into this. And this I did mostly for GoPro stuff. So this was on my, my work machine. Um, there was topics that I might want to teach to the team or reshare. And so I was using Confluence uh, Wiki to share those things. So I just put those into this blog MD so that if I wanted to get back to it and flesh it out a little bit more, I could. Um, and the same thing is with the, the bugs.md. Having a place where you can put bugs quickly and document them with as, as minimal effort as possible, I think is really important. So this helps close the loop, so I'm not always thinking about it. All right, so that's the overall structure. Um, if I'm doing a side project or a contract, uh, so I've got an app called Poor Cost, which is for calculating the cost of mixed drinks. And I've been maintaining that for a while for Donnie. Um, and for that, I have a log file that I include in both the Android version of the app as well as the uh, iOS version of the app. That way I have um, platform-specific notes because I'm an iOS developer, but I've been maintaining this Android app, and that's been a learning curve, and there's been certain bugs. I had to fix a lot of things to get it up to date um, with some of the later SDK versions. And so keeping that all tracked as its own entity, not in my log, but in something so that if I give this to someone else, they can see, oh, this is what was done, this is how this was fixed. Um, it just sort of keeps all that together. Um, and the big thing is, 
like the more you touch a piece of code or a concept, the more you're going to remember it. So this is kind of like spaced repetition. This is going to be really helpful for that. And uh, I think it's great. So let's look at my structure. And right here, I've just got my logs. This is just in my Dropbox folder. I've got a Dropbox. I use um, um, four big categories, so areas, and this is logs. And then within here, let's start with archive log. So this is my archive log. And this is, okay, so it's um, 76,000 words. Okay, it was 528,000, um, 15,000 lines. So I misspoke. It was the 528,000 characters. So it's a lot of characters. It takes a while um, to edit. So I don't work out of this, but I copy stuff into this. So you can see I started doing this, I think, 2017. And periodically, I'm writing a lot of things. Periodically, I'm not. It depends on if I'm doing contract work or if I'm working for someone else, um, whether I have time to do side projects or not. Like That's the challenge with a full-time job is I might be logging in um, my work machine log and not in my personal machine. So this is my personal machine log or any of the contract work that I do. So here you can just sort of see all the different things. And if we look... Um, You can just sort of see some of the stuff. So I, I don't even know what I, I was doing in here. Sometimes I have a blog post in here, but you can see I have code snippets, which is super helpful. Um, this is me playing around with the Mac command line tool, wait for async URL session. Um, so apparently I posted a solution on Stack Overflow and this was a code snippet that I used for that. Um, this is messing around with Jekyll, so I had an issue. I use Jekyll for some of the blogs that I run, and this was just me sort of documenting some of those errors. Then I ran into an issue with Homebrew. So like, there's all kinds of interesting, weird stuff in edge cases. And if I ever have an issue, like this one was, was big. Um, I've been doing stuff with NS window because I want to update my super easy timer app. So that's this app here um, to work over full screen apps. And I have a working solution that does that, but um, getting to that point has been a little bit difficult and sort of hard. So that's super easy timer. Um, but this is me sort of trying to figure out how do I get that on top of windows and um, right here was the key thing. And I think I posted this on Stack Overflow of like how I figured out how to do it. And it's taken me a while to actually act on it. Like this was in 2018, but I now have um, this new version of the app. Let's see if we can pull it up. Um, this one does work over full screen apps. So if I think it, I think it'll work. Let's see if I go to full screen here, what this will do, and I'll bring it back over, will it like me? And so you can see I can bring this one on. If I try to do that with the super easy timer, it just won't, it won't come onto the screen. So that's an example where having this note, I could go back to, even though it was a few years ago, and I could act on it to like be like, okay, how do I get this to work so that I can drag this window from multiple screens. So I'm dragging it from my left screen, which I guess is over here, um, onto my right screen, or I can drag it over to my, my third screen. So I've got three screens in front of me, one here, one here, and then one um, Apple Studio display. So that's super useful. If I minim um, go out of full screen, you'll see that this still appears, but this one did not. So that's an example of how I use that dev log. So that's the archive log. The log log, um, log.md, this is the most recent stuff. So you can see uh, here, <laughs> jumping into the future, uh, I guess six years later, um, playing around with NS panel, and that's this. 
Uh, you can see I also have some animations. So like there's a hover effect. If you hover, it shows you the controls. You go away, it's going to get cleaner and you just see the time. So I really like that. So playing with all of that, um, super useful. So you can see I use headings. So just the markdown formatting, I use Swift. And that's another area where I do use um, text expander. So if I just type uh, colon Swift, that gives me a code block. Uh, which is super helpful if I do Objective-C, gives me Objective-C. And then if I'm doing like bash commands, I'll just do bash, so B-A-S-H. And then I could move something like this into that and have that formatted a little bit better. Now, if I ever want to get a something that I could copy to like an email, this is a quick way to do that. Um, but this is going to be pretty verbose. So like trying to find... Playing with this uh, BR. Oh, playing with. So it's super nice to be able to see some of this formatted and get like code highlighting. So that's another thing that I like. And this is using marked. So marked two. Um, from multi markdown, there's a setting where if I just do command option P, it will then open up marked two with the formatted uh, markdown as HTML. And then from here, I can do an export. So if I'm doing a, a dev log, I could do a continuous page PDF, save that, or I could do something else. So this might be an easier way for you to read your log and review like what you did than just looking at the raw markdown, but I'm used to reading both of them. So it's still helpful. All right. And so the latest thing that I've been doing is playing around with the Swift package manager, which is going to be another video. So, um, that's how I sort of keep track of things. That's my log task list. This one's, um, going to be sort of what I, I need to do. So I'm trying to film a few videos before I go away. And uh, we've been packing the car to go on a trip to, to Delaware, going through interview questions with recruiters um, and companies, and then video titles and things that I've recorded, as well as some code and stuff that I'm doing. So uh, this task list is fairly new because most of my task lists have been on my um, work machines when I worked for GoPro or when I worked for Lambda School, which is now Bloom Tech. Yeah. So this is a newer task list. And sometimes I'll copy these over to my log, um, but I've been pretty lazy, so I haven't been always doing that. And um, I'll frequently go in here and be like, okay, um, did I finish something? So I did this. So, um, did this one as well. So I might come in here and update some of these things. So that is my task list. And then the last one is my work summary. And this one again is, is newer because my big one was on my work machine for GoPro. Um, and I did periodically save that to my personal machine just so that I could have a summary of all the things that I worked on, the big accomplishments. That way, when I lost access to that laptop, I still had the, the key points that I could talk about, the big projects that I worked on, the small things that I did. So this work summary is kind of me summarizing my week to week with my dad, who's my accountability partner. And just sort of summarizing that. So like big things for me, I've been getting up pretty early lately. I think it's the added sunshine um, and the increased exercise, um, just wanting to write more, wanting to publish my videos. Um, some of these videos aren't resonating as well. So, um, and then sending my emails, uh, code challenges, I'm struggling with code challenges, but I think I did pretty good. I felt pretty prepared this past week in my, my interviews, um, and a big thing for me has been do not disturb mode. I've been like living in that mode before I would like check YouTube and 
go on social media and it was super distracting and then I would be like scatterbrained. So I've been really cutting that out. I cut out alcohol for the last maybe 30 days, almost more than. Um, that's been really good. So that's helped my weight drop and I've been prepping meals. So that's kind of my work summary. But you can use this to, to highlight projects that you've worked on, the impact that you have and stuff like that. Right now, for me, it's just a weekly summary of what I've been working on. So I hope this was helpful. There's a lot that I think you can improve with when you do a work summary. For me, it's been how to document like little quirks and things um, in apps as I have questions and want to learn how to do them. And then as I figure them out, like I showed you the full screen thing, super helpful to be able to go back to those notes and see those exact properties that are going to allow me to get the, the intended behavior I want if I want a full screen app. So just having the ability to figure that out is absolutely amazing. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, just comment down below. Let me know how you are using your dev logs. And then I don't know what's, um, what's next in my list. Oh, we're going to talk about command, command line Swift Package Manager. So if you want to learn about Swift Package Manager on the command line, um, stick around for the video tomorrow, and I will see you later. Thanks for watching.